Tera. Slowly so Roger can get his stuff ready. Inco. Thank you, Roger. Spotlight <laughs> on excellence. 5 1. Recess rocks. And Rhode Island Professional Development. Okay. Recess rocks. Recess rocks is a program um, sponsored by Playworks that is uh, was sponsored by Blue Cross. Help me out with the organization, sorry. It was Blue Cross. I'm going to lose the organizations. I don't think that's wrong. Look, it, it, um, <coughs> Blue Cross Playworks and Rhode Island Healthy Schools Coalition. Okay. There we go. We got them. Um, what they do is they sponsor training for schools. It's for teacher assistants, school staff, and the principal of schools. And they really work on developing a collegial, fun atmosphere of play for kids. So it's really getting kids to play appropriately at recess. Um, recess is often one of the very difficult times because it can be somewhat unstructured. Um, when a lot of arguments happen or, or fights over how to play a game or things like that. One thing that uh, Playworks does is they give the strategies to the people who are actually supervising the play of how to um, how to get kids' attention, how to set up play, how to set up various stations. Um, so we went to two full days of training where we literally played for two days. It came up with a game plan. Um, all of the teacher assistants in the building went, so it was Joshua Gay, Allison Morgan, Beth Turcott, Marjorie Hannity, and Carla Woodhouse, both PE teachers, so Noel Kiernan and Jason Ford and myself. One of the things they require is that the principal participate because the principal is often the person who has the leverage to make things happen within the building as far as scheduling and things like that and supporting the program. So they're very invested into the principal being supportive of the program. Um, so since we've gone, actually after day one, I, the, the, the teacher assistants came back and started implementing uh, Playworks games right away. Um, what they really do is get you to teach kids to play certain games. You set it up in certain areas with known parameters. Um, so we have set up a recess binder. This is, we had our first recess rocks meeting this afternoon. Um, what they, their Playworks trainer will come out and work with us during um, a play, a, a recess section and actually work with the team of individuals. Um, so one of the things we did was come up with a logo for our our Recess Rocks team, taking our Wilbur logo. Um, so it will be Wilbur says soar, stop and listen, open the door to making good decisions, act responsibly, and respect yourself and others, be kind. So we're kind of going with our new mascot that we just named Wilbur. He was officially named Wilbur at the um, homecoming, what did you, it was pep rally that was, that we really announced the name. Um, so what we do is, is putting together a game plan this binder will have a map of the playground areas mapped out where certain games are played, um, the staffing for the playground, and actually teaching the kids to play certain games. And so what um, Mr. Ford and Ms. Kernan will do is, is teach the games in the PE classes. When possible, the teacher assistants will push in so that, they, that they're also a part of that teaching the kids to play, but then the rules transfer to the recess setting. The reason that's so important. I'm not being loud enough. No, you are. Okay. The reason that's so important is what we found was happening is, say, kids would play four square, or they would play um, a football game, and they would every day they would make up a different set of rules, which would lead to people arguing or excluding each other. So it's not that we don't want them to play; we just want them to play in ways that. Everybody has a fighting shot of consistently knowing the rules, knowing what the expectations are. So what there'll, there'll be known rules for, for given games, which are basically the rules of the game. 
Um, so what we're working on is a strategic plan to teach the kids games and then you rotate. So certain things might be there all the time and other things rotate in and out. Um, it has been going really well in the lower a little bit of pushback from the fifth and sixth grade because they don't necessarily like the fact that we're telling them how to play a given game. Um, it's not that we're telling them they can't play, it's just we're saying if you're going to play four square, you're going to play by the given rules. Um, so it's been pretty successful so far and um, and right this year I think we're going to front load teaching some of the recess games in PE classes, but I think once the kids know more of the games that won't be necessary. But it's been a lot of fun. Um, even just things like getting the, getting the kids to, teaching them little tricks to transition kids to their lines and having them do some deep breathing before they go in so that they're, um, you know, they're in a better state to walk through the hallways and not be so ramped up from recess. I mean, it went down to that whole mindfulness level also. So that's Recess Rocks in a nutshell. If the kids want to just play their own game, they can, they absolutely. can do that. They're not... Yep. The, the, the given, they can't play in, you know, in the middle of the given game, right. but they are welcome to go and play, play something else. It is not a requirement. So there's yeah. usually two or three kind of structured games, and then they're more than welcome to play Free whatever they want. I mean, yes. it's, it is their recess. They can choose what they want. We are not telling them they have to play a given game. Yeah. There's still free play. Yes. If that's their option. Absolutely. And just to say, you, you were really, we were, the school was recognized for the fact that all of our recess people went to the training. No other school district has had that happen. So we have consistency about how this is being handled. And this is really, really recent. It's been the two, the two sessions were in the month of October. So we're just getting down to the yep. point um, where we're tweaking implementation. I will start sharing like probably a game a week in my parent memos on, on weekends just so that they can see the games and um, really getting the kids to realize why. We want them all to have fun and all know the rules and not have it be, um, you know, turn into something of a ruckus because, you know, different people are playing different ways. So It's also a really great way, I think, of empowering the um, assistants to feel a part of a team. Um, yeah. And I think you guys are doing a great job. Just elevating their practice. Yeah. Yep, and I, we met, I met with all of them today and they're all very happy about, about the way recesses are going. Right. Once again, I think the older grades are, we need to do a little bit more coaching and teaching there, but I think it's, it's kind of changing habits that they've developed over time. The little kids are responding very well. And the, the set of games you would do would be different with fourth and fifth grade than what you would do with kindergarten, first or second grade. So it's not that it's one set of games for everybody. Yeah. You mentioned your parent memo. Do you get any feedback from your parent memo from parents? I actually got a couple of people that responded to me last weekend and they were quite positive about liking getting the feedback and knowing that they can consistently go to one place. I kind of feel like you don't necessarily always get the positive feedback because people just don't necessarily think to, um, to give that. But it was like all of a sudden I think I got three emails on Saturday morning and I was like, wow. So it's it effect, was nice. It's effective. Yeah. And I think they like the format for this year. It's one-stop shopping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. All right. Thank you. Six Superintendent Gold Shared Services Agreement. Do I have a copy of that document? The Shared Services Agreement? Mm. It's right there up at Where is it? Board Docs, there where is. everything lives now. Do we have a, do we have a, a paper copy of that? Yep. Yeah. You get two more? Yeah. You notice I'm the only one without a computer here. It's hard to read. I'm not giving <laughs> in. It's difficult. I'm not giving in to all these people sitting behind their computers, typing away. You don't have to. We don't have to wait for that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, on October 22nd, I met with uh, Robert Mushin and Tony Tixier, the town council president and town administrator. And we discussed the shared services agreement. It's part of the MOU that we get together every year to regroup, talk about what's working, what isn't working. And so we had a really good conversation. Before I met with Mr. Texera and Mr. Mushin, I met with our head custodian, I met with our IT director, I reached out to uh, Bill Moore, who is the town um, DPW director. and took notes and um, got their feedback, positive and negative. And if you look up, you can't really see, I can see it in front of me, 
We have the um, emendations in red. Can anyone see those? I wish it were larger. But those are the additions? Yes. And so... Um, can we make that bigger? No, I think we can. Yep. With the little um, arrow. Then there it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Per perfect. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Mariah. Um, we did make some changes. B, maintaining and cutting the grass around all town owned property. This is the uh, d director of public works section of the MOU. So, can, can I interrupt you? Can sure. you just give a, a quick oversight for anyone in the audience who doesn't know where this document came from and why it exists? Sure. Especially to the camera. Many, many years ago, a verbal agreement was made between the town and the schools to share some services. It was um, never codified, there was never any documentation, and it was working. Uh, the school department shared its IT director with the town, notably the safety complex, the public safety complex, and the town shared their director of public works with the schools. Plowing, um, exterior work, major maintenance jobs. And so as the school building became more complex, you know, with more complicated systems for you know, HVAC systems and so forth, um, and also as systems at the public safety complex, those technology systems in place, they became more complex. Um, everyone felt, all the parties felt we needed to document this to hammer out a memorandum of understanding. So we did that last year. It was maybe a two to three month process. Working with the town and the schools, it was seamless. Everyone agrees that if we want to share efficiencies in a small town um, between departments, that means we have to share resources, and it has been working well. We did get together as um, the agreement directs us to do, and we did make the following changes. The DPW um, was tasked with maintaining and cutting the grass around all town on property, and we added including weekly mowing, not weeding, of the Wilbur McMahon School Oasis and monthly weeding of the courtyard to nowhere. Yes, the courtyard to nowhere is an actual term, <laughs> and, it's, and it's in um, this agreement. It is the secondary courtyard. Okay, it is right here, and because of safety issues and lack of um, required egress and so forth, it can no longer be a functional space. So the weeding is done in there, and the Oasis, the DPW was mowing the Oasis, but there was never a schedule. So, it, you know, Sonia and I would sort of hound, you know, if we, if we caught one of the DPW staff members, hey, can you get in there? It's really high. We have our Oasis committee coming to do some um, weeding in there, which we did twice this summer, and, the, you know, the grass was too high. So we, we knew that we, need to make, make, we needed to add um, a provision for more regular monitoring and mowing by the DPW of our beautiful lawn in the Echo Oasis. So we added that and everyone agreed, both sides, to put it there. We also, um, if you look at C, overseeing heat and AC maintenance. The DPW is, ta the director is tasked with overseeing our um, heating and cooling system here. It is a pretty sophisticated online dashboard. No one on site has ever had access to that dashboard. So you've been in meetings in here where you are freezing, right? Or when you are really hot. Like today. Like today. And so um, it was you know, my idea to allow access for, uh, to this dashboard for our new IT director. We know it's a sophisticated system, and Jonathan has the skill set um, to assist with that. Have you been in there yet? Uh, I finally got access to it the other day, yeah. Um, we started poking around a little bit. The dashboard that will allow us to easily change right. individuals' own uh, temperatures will be raised in, in the next few days. This, no one on site has had, has had access since the um, renovation. I had a New Year's Eve event here, and it was like 40 because no one could turn the heat up. Uh, and yes, yes, I lived it last year, and no one could do, uh, you know, so um, we negotiated that into the shared services agreement. So now Jonathan will have um, 
access. I have to say the town has been really uh, committed to working with us so that all of this works for both sides. We also, if you look at um, L, we added manage um, exterior <coughs> issues such as roof siding and other breaches. I mean, that's my language. I'm no engineer. Uh, so maybe we could wordsmith that a little bit. But we have issues to the exterior of our building that are beyond the skill set of our custodial staff. You know, they're not roofers. They're not masons. They're not, um, you know, waterproofers. And so we really need the DPW um, director to assist us more with managing those exterior issues. We're dealing with one right now after the most recent rain. That is the hallway across from Carolyn Sedgwick's office, you know, the eastern wall of the gym. When it rains, it comes in. It's, it's awful. So, so that's a breach that we need um, our DPW director to, to help us uh, work on, and that is happening, and that's been a breach for a long time. Also, there's waterproofing that needs to be done in this courtyard. When it rains, there's water alongside the hallway to the cafeteria. And that's going on for a bit, so we need some waterproofing done there. And so Mr. Texera and Mr. Mushroom agree that the director of the DPW should assist us in um, hiring and, and, and getting all of that uh, fixed. We also, if you look at I, go all the way down there. Um, perform such other duties agreed upon by the Little Compton Town Administrator. That's just some wordsmithing. Mr. Texera's position is administrator, not manager, so we just sort of change that. Also, I, I thought under Section 4 there was some uh, vague language regarding, we had, um, if you look at the sentence that starts with furthermore, Furthermore, Director of IT and the Town Hall Information Technology Consultant, the Town Hall is separate from the um, services provided by our IT Director. The Town Hall decided to go and outsource their technology needs, and so they work with a, a vendor. And in this agreement last year, we wanted a provision uh, for both the town and the school um, that provided some sort of redundancy. So if Jonathan it cannot be here for whatever reason, then we could call the town hall vendor. If the town hall vendor couldn't be there and Munis crashes, and we use that too, then Jonathan could be, um, you know, we could ship him there and he could fix whatever he needs to fix there in an emergency. So we've, we've just felt the language is a little bit vague when I met with Jonathan about this agreement and asked for his um, input. I pointed this out. And, and it looked like we were asking for a physical backup system, you know, backups that we have in our houses or whatever for our computers. So we changed it, a backup protocol for technical support coverage. It was just vague language. And it sort of implied we were talking about hardware when we're talking about human resources. Um, so, you know, I think we're all very happy with this agreement. We worked hard on it, and thank you. Um, Attorney Anderson was very patient last year with us when we were hammering this out. And I think we have very few tweaks. Everyone's pretty happy, aside from you know, the leaks notwithstanding. Everyone's pretty happy with how things are going. Any questions from the committee? And. Uh, as you see, this is uh, looked at every year. Every year, this this exercise is done. So the town has been wonderful, yeah. absolutely wonderful. Thank you. So six two, Rhode Island comprehensive assessment system broadcast results. Well, yes, the results were um, released a few weeks ago, and you know we were very disappointed. You know we we sort of did hold our ground with math. You know we're beat every district around but we don't look at that competitively we're looking at our kids and what they need and in ELA we dropped six percentage points we had um, a couple of grade level cohorts that took a severe dip and so across our aggregate that that did drag us down and 
we are a community of practice here and we immediately mobilized when those scores um, came to light. Sonia and I had them for 72 hours. They were obviously embargoed before uh, they were made public and, and we did not sleep for 72 hours um, Friday night to I think Tuesday. I, I think um, educators are harder on themselves than, than anyone else can be and I was lucky enough to watch Sonia gather up uh, her team, uh, the first instructional leadership team in, in this school's history. Her ELA coach coordinator, um, the IB coach coordinator, and uh, various other specialists in the ELA area. And they used a protocol to um, problem solve and basically they did a root cause analysis. They were absolutely candid, blunt, and um, you know, pulled no punches with each other. They came up with a roughed out 14, 15 point plan and they will be presenting um, that in, in more detail mm -hmm. at the December school committee meeting. Um, talking about um, scores and where they lead us. As educators, we, we look at these objective measures, these state assessments, as uh, one data point in terms of our kids' lives. It's one sh you know, snapshot in time. And for us, you know, it, it's sort of a reckoning for, for Wilbur McMahon. Even though we are still holding steady you know, in math, um, it's still not good enough. ELA, I mean, none of these, none of the data really reflects what our kids are capable of, or it doesn't reflect their, their skill sets. It reflects how we are not teaching to the target that has been given to us, and that is RICAPS. It reflects likely a history of um, anti high stakes testing, you know, that sort of generated an opt out movement that generated. Um, a culture around you can't even mention teaching to the test in the classroom you can't mention you know that this is going to prepare you for the test and so these scores are reckoning for for the Wilbur McMahon community we are not a community that subscribes to valuing just metrics um, but this objective measure is a sobering you know set of data for us and um, that's why you know we feel we need more articulation with Portsmouth High School. I um, and that's why we may want to sync up with them in terms of release time days uh, in the future, so that our teachers can work with the ninth grade teachers, the tenth grade teachers. I was lucky to be part of a critical friends group at Ride. I met with the commissioner. She was actually partnered with me in a root cause analysis at the same time that our instructional leadership team was engaged in it here. And at the end of the root cause analysis, I said to the commissioner, I said, my goodness, I, I, you know, I think my last answer to your why is we don't have a high school. Not having a high school in this community puts a lot of daylight between uh, what we do here and the end game. The end game is high school readiness and then post high school um, pathways, college, career, trades, um, military. And there may be, there may be this, you know, just this sort of out of sync um, piece that we can remedy with some PLC time professional learning community time with our Portsmouth counterparts. We've mentioned it at this table for the past year a few times the Spanish 2 issue. When the articulation, the vertical articulation between our Spanish 1 teacher here and our Spanish 2 teachers at Portsmouth High School, when that was tightened, we filled those gaps. When our teacher here knew the end game with precision and the kids had enough time scheduled, um, we filled those gaps. We received a, a communication this week from a Spanish 2 teacher saying, 
This was the most prepared cohort of Spanish two kids at Portsmouth High in her memory. So when we close that daylight between the rigor that's expected on the high school level, we don't have one here, so there's always been a disconnect, and the level of rigor, the comfort zone here, we will see that state metric and our kids sync up. Um, we have many pieces to this plan, but that is one of them. There's just, there's not a sense of the end game. And so there, we need to elevate the rigor and we need community support around that. We need community, community support around um, issues of you know, grade inflation or um, all kids having to be on the honor roll or no one getting a C. We need authentic grading practices here at, in addition to elevated rigor. And that's my job, is to implement that. Um, we've already started. Do you want to do your slides or? Uh, well, thank you for that honest assessment. Anyone else on that? Anyone want to comment? Uh, Ed, as, as it sounds as though there's more to come at the next meeting, mm -hmm. um, I would yeah. just ask that we might be provided with a copy of the uh, root uh, root cause analysis, is the way you titled it, well before the next sure. meeting, so that we have um, we're prepared to discuss it then. Okay. Any other comments from the committee? Absolutely. Public. Can always comment later if you choose. Thank you. Committee reports. Portsmouth School Committee liaison report. Yes. There was a uh, fabulous presentation from a gentleman from the uh, coalition on vaping and the crisis that we're dealing with there. Um, so I'm sure we're going to address that at the wellness committee at some point. Yeah, uh, Everyone's very concerned about that, but he gave a really wonderful overview. Corey, Sylvia, Portsmouth Prevention Coalition, you just know it. I do know. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, and we also talked um, extensively about their concerns with RICAS. So everybody is struggling. Oh, gosh, yes. Trust me. Pro Province yeah. Public Schools. Yeah. So, no, we things are going well. Thank you. Welcome. Recreation Committee, nothing to report. Health and Wellness, <coughs> Jenna? Um, all good. We're meeting December 12th. The uh, before school box program, I think, is continuing to go really well. Yes. I observed it. Um, which was, I was just blown away by it. Just amazing. These moms, whose younger kids are there too, and they're managing their younger kids and dealing with the, the students is just beautiful. It's like a ballet. <laughs> are the um, older kids coming at all? I, I don't think there's as many of them coming. No. I think this. Yeah. I think we need to get our younger kids coming and then have them yeah. funnel up. Yeah. And I think which is what we had expected. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's it. Thanks. Policy subcommittee, we'll take that down further. Ed? Sure. Okay, Oasis subcommittee. Principal, anything? Mm -hmm. I will say I was in it the other day. Beautiful. And there's more stuff in there. I mean, you can't even walk around. <laughs> Trees, bushes, flowers, I don't know what's going on. I can't even walk around in there. There's a lot of stuff in there. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I don't think they've added a lot of stuff. Around. A lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's no paths in there. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> School safety subcommittee report. We had an executive session today, and it was centered around uh, cameras, and all that uh, is uh, are surrounded with cameras. Discussion items: nine one update on Portland School District's multi-tiered system Mariah's. of supports. MTSS. Yep, it's up Mariah. Sorry, I think we missed the finance report. Did I? Yes. You see, and Captain is speaking up over there. I thought you did that on purpose. No problem. No problem. No problem. So I will revert back to finance report. Go ahead. All right. Briefly. I missed that whole thing. You did? Wow. Briefly, uh, you have the uh, October 31st financial statements. Um, I haven't got a projection yet because a lot of the invoices are still coming in. But just to focus in on the out of district tuition, which is really where a lot of the fluctuations are going to occur. We did finally get the billing in for the first quarter for Portsmouth. We're at 118 students, which is uh, nine lower than our budget of 127. So there's about a $97,000 savings there. The 
uh, career and tech, um, we have three and a half students at Newport, two students at the Met, five and a half students based on the tuition. We're probably going to be right on budget uh, for that one. So we, we should be in pretty good shape there. And um, we are watching, some of the expenses we are watching, obviously, are the um, maintenance and the upkeep for this building. Sometimes there are expenses that pop up here that uh, we didn't uh, we didn't have budgeted, so we're continuing to watch those. But uh, other than that, I don't see any unusual items uh, in the budget for FY20. Questions for John? Anyone? John, this morning, Tiverton, we do have a CTE in Tiverton. We have a. Um, <coughs> I've done the transportation. So they're gonna, um, yeah. Yeah. All right, they'll get they'll bill us based on um, maybe no, May. No, no, no. So I'll I'll get that. Yep. Thank you. Seven two capital improvement five year plan. Would you like to say something about that, John? Uh, yeah, we're working with RGB. They're going to put together a, a five year plan. Um, we should be meeting with them over the next uh, few months. I believe we're going to submit that in. Um, We'll we'll set the stage one would go in in September with approval for a ride in uh, November. Uh, in the meantime, what we're going to be looking at is the needs for this building over the next five years. Whether we're going to look at things like, you know, the building envelope for windows. Um, we've, we've had some discussion about whether we put solar in in the uh, on the roof. Uh, there may be other items that are going to come up as, as we go forward, but we'll have obviously plenty of time for discussion before that, that five-year plan gets submitted. So I'd like to segue off that. Uh, is an update on the front office gym renovation? Can you give me an update on that? Uh, at this point in time, the, uh, contra the contract has been signed with the contractor. They're in the process now of ordering materials. Uh, I don't believe... Uh, submittal process. Every day we're getting submittals, you and I. But in terms of a schedule date, the demo is not going to take all that much time. I think right. they're looking at, what, two or three weeks in right. total. So we, we would probably see that happening um, either sometime later this month or early December. One of the things that we're going to wait on, obviously, is the ballistic glass, because that was a 14-week lead time. So that will be the last piece that we'll probably wind up going in. Submittals are in for just about everything, including the bollards. We got those today. Okay. So are we getting closer to a plan of mm -hmm. what it's going to look like to our parents when we start ripping apart the front office? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, we had some discussions with the fire chief because he doesn't want the alarms going off with dust and everything else. So we're going to uh, coordinate that so that we don't have any false alarms going on and. Uh, so we're preparing for that uh, for that construction. So I'd like to see that at some point. I know I've asked for it a few times. Um, yeah. Mike Montel doesn't have that ready it's for okay. us yet, but it's okay. I just don't want it to be forgotten. That's all. Thank you. Laura, and just one question. Go ahead. Um, the um, gymnatorium renovation will that take care of the leak that's driving you crazy? I think we need to fix that even beforehand. Yeah, it's pretty bad. If that leak is a roof leak. With this uh, uh, fairly significant uh, warranty on that roof from 2014, so mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's been leaking for years, right, Patrick? Yeah, it's been you know leaking for about five years. So. I don't think it's the roof itself. I think it's um, flashing. Oh, someone said it might be the brickwork or something like that. So. We we are in process of getting it looked at. It has to be done. All right, 9-1, uh, discussion items. Update on the Portland School District's multi-tiered system of supports, MTSS. Yes. For people don't know about what's going on over there, you want to just briefly explain it? Sure. Uh, the school committee likes an update every now and then in um, the wake of the, um, the Nathan... Um, Nathan Bruno. Excuse me, please forgive me. Nathan Bruno, I'm thinking be, be great for Nate. Um, which turned into e EIS, e no, ESI, ESI, Every Student Initiative. Initiative. Um, in, in the wake of the uh, Nathan Bruno tragedy um, at Portsmouth High School, 
where our children matriculate. Um, the school committee has asked me to be in continu continual contact with the superintendent around the multi-tiered system of supports um, in place there. The MTSS system, we have one here, um, was always in place in Portsmouth, in Portsmouth, but it was never quite systematized. And what they've done now is they have hired um, a coordinator, a district-wide coordinator to ensure that all new uh, practices and protocols, and there are no new policies, there are only new practices and protocols um, that they're consistent throughout the district and that documentation is consistent. Team makeup at each building, the MTSS team is consistent and I'm happy to report that the data is on an individual basis um, and, and it is reaching kids and supporting kids like never before. Um, whether it's an academic goal or a social emotional goal that the MTSS team is working with um, to you know, assist that child. It could be situational, it could be an ongoing vulnerability, but there's now a consistent support system in place. There always was a support system, but not as systematized. Well, from the outside looking in, and it looks like it's a better atmosphere over there from my own personal yes. view. Yes. Um, but I don't know, you know, what's going on. But it, from what I see being disseminated from them, and, and is it looks like it's positive. Consistent procedures and protocols. Any other questions uh, on that? Have been a game changer. Okay, thanks. On uh, 19, scheduling options being discussed at Portland High School. You want to ex quickly explain that one? If there are any parents of Portsmouth High School kids watching this. Um, and I hope this picks it up, Roger, who calls me the whisperer. It is. It's my zen, you know, yogini um, demeanor. Um, I have worked and taught under both schedules. Uh, right now, Portsmouth has a block schedule. It's an AB, 4-4. And they're thinking of going towards, um, they call it a waterfall schedule. You may call it a rotating schedule. And and it's confusing, so if there are any parents who want to contact me or meet with me or, you know, I'm willing to demystify this for them, especially our eighth grade parents. Um, I don't think Portsmouth has decided yet what kind of schedule they'll have for next year. They did poll their parents and kids. Um, anecdotally, I've heard that for some kids, the four by four block which means four courses a day at an hour and a half, 90 minutes a day. <coughs> Teachers love it because they can do a focused lesson um, for 30 minutes, then they can break, you know, have the kids break off 45 minutes into stations or groups, and then they can spend 15 minutes reflecting and getting ready, um, you know, kick-starting their homework. But 90 minutes for a 14-year-old, an 18 to 18-year-old. You know, some of the some of the kids have said, "Oh, it, it can be it can be deadly." Um, so that's one of the the cons of, of a four by four ske schedule. 90-minute classes. You take four one day, you take four the next day. It's an A B um, year-round. Some schools do an A semester one, all the same four courses, and then a B second semester, all four courses. Um, but it's that 90 minute block. You can do a lot of, um, you know, aside from direct instruction, you can do a lot of project based learning with a 90 minute block. Um, what happened at Portsmouth High School last year, I believe some juniors, they were rising seniors really, they stormed a school committee meeting and they took the mic and said that we can't, you know, this block has been a constraint to um, accessing certain courses. And so the school listened. The adults listened to the kids. And which is what schools should do. Student voice and choice equals engagement. And all those good things happen when students are engaged. And so I think the students would rather have um, seven, you know, eight courses and seven a day and drop one. Hence that waterfall. And so what you do, it, you know, the kids would have Day one would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Day two would be two, three, four, five, six, eight. You know, and, and you just sort of drop and you waterfall. The beauty of that, and I'll, I'll tell parents, is 
you get the kids at a different time every day. With a block, if you have those kids, 7.30 in the morning to, to 9, and they're not morning kids, or if you have the 12.30 to 2 class, um, when the kids are, you know, zonked out, uh, so the waterfall is, is something they're considering. Rather than a fixed schedule, the class meets the same time every day, the waterfall is, you know, it, it sort of um, flows every day in a different sequence of classes. So some of our, our eighth grade parents, I know they have questions. So I'm Thank going you for to uh, them. explaining that <laughs> on camera. Any questions for anyone on that, Kim? So how, if any, are, are we um, having a voice in this discussion and in the decision that the school's making? Um, yeah, I it, think it's, 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 it's current survey. parents and, and all the kids. So, I mean, do we as a school have... No, we don't have any agency um, in terms of how they set their academic schedule. It's a good question. I asked the same question yeah. to the superintendent. And she gave me that answer. I didn't ask John, though. Is there a legal, is there anything? There's nothing we can do, right? No. no. You know, I mean, I think the best, no. the best we like can do is, it, is it explain it and, and, and... Just educate ourselves. Educate. What? Yeah. Anything, John? Right. You, you, you um, have a contract with Portsmouth. You take what Portsmouth delivers. Your contract is coming up. If you wish to explore other options, and there are other options out there, the time to look at other options will be coming very shortly. But, you know... I'm, I'm in contact with um, Joe Amaral and uh, the freshman coordinator, freshman academy coordinator, and the guidance counselor. Um, kids do like a rotating schedule. They don't like to you know, have a fixed schedule, the same classes every day. So I'm giving my feedback. Paula, do you have a question? I'll give mine. Go ahead. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I know my child and his friends love the schedule the way it is now. They like the block schedule because it allows them to do after school activities and be able to um, schedule for themselves. So if they know they have um, you know, a band event tonight, they need to get their homework done for tomorrow, yesterday. You know, they're, they're able to make those plans themselves. Um, so I, I know the kids at Portsmouth are being very vocal whichever way Yep. they feel as best they have taken the survey mm -hmm. and I know um, they've been encouraging their parents to take the survey and vote in favor of what they like. Yeah. It's energizing the school, that's for sure. You know? And giving the kids that voice and choice gives them ownership. So, I mean, they've had the fixed schedule for a while, so it might be time for change. It does throw a school into a tailspin when you change the academic schedule. Um, it, it really does take a couple of years for teachers to learn to teach to a 55 minute as opposed to a 90 and um, so I mean there are pluses and minuses thank you 93 principal and superintendent goals for 2020 so how this is going to work committee is Mariah is going to supply us with this principal goals she'll be first that'll be in December we'll review her current goals in executive session with you uh, then we will go into open session and we'll have a set of new goals for you. Um, so that's how we're going to do that. Then in January we'll do the same thing with the superintendent. Uh, same process. Any discussion from the committee on that? Thank you. Any discussion from the principal or superintendent? Good. Public input? This is your time to shine if you'd like. Not seeing any. Action items. 1101, consider, discuss, and vote on affirmative action non discrimination policy. This is a second read. Edward? Uh, happy to entertain any questions. Just. Um, Do we have it on the. Brought the language into compliance with respect to the Title IX um, mm -hmm. coordinator that we didn't have uh, identified, and uh, now we do. All right. Do I have a motion? Uh, so moved. So second. Second. In all in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, Ed, for that. That's 11-2. Consider discuss and vote crisis response policy amendments. Again, a second read. 
again, uh, much like mm -hmm. uh, the last, where it just brings us into we're required to have a crisis response team. Um, mm -hmm. And essentially, it would just change um, the name of what we already had in place. Is it already a vote to accept that? Do I have one? Yes, motion. Do you have a vote? Motion. motion. Excuse me. Motion. A second. Second. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you. 11-3, consider discussing a vote on field trip <coughs> policy amendments. This is a second read. What do we got on this? The this one? field trip policy was uh, the Helping Hands Fund uh, mm -hmm. paragraph, which um, articulated that we do have financial help available for those who would otherwise have difficulty mm -hmm. going on a field trip. Where is that wordage? Uh, second verbiage. paragraph. Oh. Yep, there, it's there is a fund. Yep, Helping Hands. The Helping Hands mm -hmm. Fund administered by the School of Social Worker and the principal to provide financial assistance so that all students may participate. All applicants are reviewed in a confidential, in confidence and application forms may be found on the school's website or at their business office. Is that whole paragraph new? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do I have a motion? I so move. Second. Second. Any discussion? Not seeing any. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Thank you. Yeah. This is a first read. <laughs> Discuss on purchasing policy amendments. Uh, the purchasing policy amendment I would like to, um, if possible, put off table um, to, to table because we uh, need to review and hope to be able to get um, Mr. McNamee at the next policy meeting to be able to discuss that. What about facilities? Did you just skip the facilities? I don't know. Well, I did. I don't know why I'm doing that. I'll go back to that. The new agenda format. I'm getting no, that's no, that's not no. That's just my fault. The water fault. That's my fault. No. <laughs> so we're gonna table that. Okay. And then table that, and we're going to pop back to 11.4, which is a first read, facilities use policy amendment. Uh, the facilities use policy amendment is going to add, because we have um, charge over the gymnasium and fields during school hours, um, and because the recreation committee has charge over the gymnasium and fields during non-school hours, uh, we need to be able to interface and coordinate, and this allows for um, additional signature lines so that when it's an after-school hours event, um, the Recreation Committee has signed off on it, and um, everyone is on the same calendar. Makes sense. That's the first read, so we'll see that again next month. 11-6, mm -hmm. consider, discuss, and vote. This is, again, a first read. Home instruction policy amendments. I would ask that we also table that, and if um, possible, I would. Um, we discussed it at the policy um, subcommittee level, um, but would appreciate it if we could have it as a topic for discussion uh, for the next regular meeting to decide how it is. Uh, that we ought to approach um, to use the language of um, others. I have lost it here and I had it up on the top so that I didn't. Is it a, pa oh here it is, um, uh, a partially, partial enrollment I believe is the term where um, home um, educated students would be participating in classes at the school or Portsmouth High School, et cetera. Okay. Any discussion on that? All right, we'll see that again. 11-7, consider it discusses again a first read, data collection policy. Um, this was just my attempt to codify what is effectively present practice and to be sure that everybody is using that practice. Um, if there are any questions, I can read it. Um, verbatim, it seems fairly straightforward and self-evident. There was that one addition that was made, um, adding state assessments, but um, they don't have any questions. Or no, I, don't, I understand it. Okay. All right, any questions from the committee on that one? All right, you'll see that again next month. 11-8, consider discussing and vote on creating a little conference school committee resolution 
to amend the field trip mm -hmm. funding law. Um, do I have a motion? Yes, you have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. Who would like to discuss this? Ed? Uh, happy to. I'm going to scroll back if I can and find under correspondence what is that. Um, my scrolling isn't working here. Um, so the resolution from Exeter West Greenwich, I know that we've had multiple discussions as a school committee about um, the new field trip policy and its implications. And um, this, this solution ultimately lies with the General Assembly and this would just, um, I mean, I would advocate that we adopt um, this resolution and or sign on to the resolution that they have, um, but that would add language um, so that the ride prohibition uh, provision, do we have? We do. And if it is, if you scroll down to um, the second page, right there in that second paragraph, um, it would add that language that is in bold font. Um, this prohibition yes. does not apply to school sponsored field trips or events. Parents can be asked for funding as long as this provides funding to any student whose family mm -hmm. cannot afford the cost of curriculum based trips required by the Rhode Island Basic Education Plan. So then that means what? We presently um, offer financial assistance, and this would just mm -hmm. help provide that uh, right. exception from that. what precedes that. Um, and to add to that, John? No, that's fine. It's a policy question, and that's what school committees are for. It's what we do. It's what Ed does. Really. Um, I don't. Would it, that be something? Would you draft the resolution, John, or would we just adopt this one? And I think it's more effective if you, if you, to frankly cut and paste theirs mm -hmm. and send it as yours mm -hmm. because then legislators will know when they so, open the envelope what you're talking about. Thank you. Yes, sorry. I meant adopt their that language. No, that, um, and that's but, fine. And that's if you folks are comfortable with it, that's fine. Hey, we're in discussion. Any discussion from any of the folks here? No, we're doing it. No more for discussion. All in favor? All right. Uh, any opposed? Not seeing any. 11-9, consider, discuss, and vote to approve 2020 schedule of meetings. Over motion. I've got uh, Polly and a Any discussion on that? Do we need to see that? Is it up there? Second ones, there it is. All in favor? Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, oh. Sorry. Uh -huh. oh, oh. So November 11th is a question. Okay. Veterans Day. Why would we have it on Veterans Day? Well, right. So there's not a um, a November date. So November 11th oh, is on this National Holiday, Wednesday, November 4th, or Wednesday, April November 18th. are both possibilities. They're both what? Possibilities. possibilities. All possibilities. Yeah. So you want to pick one? Which one makes sense with when's October? I'd say June. four. Okay. Mm -hmm. I say four. So we're gonna amend this thing? Yeah. So we're gonna amend this thing. Okay. Um, I'd like to amend the agenda to reflect that in November. You gonna take your uh you gonna take your motion? Out. Oh. You have to take I got a motion in a second. Now we wanna amend it. Can you just amend it? I'm trying. Go right. ahead. You've made, there's, there's been a motion to approve yes. the schedule. Yes. The motion was seconded. Yeah. Does anyone object to amending the motion to fix the date in November? Anyone object to the motion? No. Nope. No. Then what's the fix? What's the fix? Go ahead. To um, make the November meeting the 4th of November instead of the 11th. Any motion for that? Uh, it's the motion that is on the floor is to adopt the calendar with, with November 4th instead of November 11th. Got it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, 11 10. Consider discuss a vote to approve any request for information from administration and or legal. Not seeing any. I will consider a vote to adjourn.
Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.